Blog Talk Radio. Uh... Emanating from the embrace of the goddess and her god is a wheel of shimmering divine energies. This is the sacred spot where worship is done. The center of this wheel is right where you are. Live here and let your heart stream with an unending flow of adoration in this way. Do we tend the altar of love? Hello, everyone. This is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. Uh, and I would also like to introduce my lovely, beautiful co-host, the the queen of questionable comforts, the Celtic queen of questionable comforts, Her Holiness, uh, Sri Sri Sri. Amelia Santara. Hello, Amelia. <laughs> Hello, Chrism. Oh, my goodness. This is getting worse every week. So, how is everything in the, in the uh, country of Ireland? Everything is wonderful here currently. We're having a lovely um, weather um, cycle at the moment. Autumn is coming in very slowly and gracefully. Um, it's 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 a wonderful time of the year here, and as everybody knows, it's coming up to midnight here, gone 11 p.m. It's good to be with you, Chrism, and with all the listeners, um, as usual on a Wednesday. So, just to say to everybody, welcome to everybody that is joining us in the chat room, and indeed that is listening in the archive to this conversation. I'd like to begin by just saying, if you wish to support CRISM, if you wish to support the Kundalini Awakening Systems groups that CRISM gives us teachings to and through, then please go to www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and in the upper right-hand corner you will see a donate button. All donations are gratefully received and they help to support Chrism in this wonderful work that he does 24-7, supporting all of us, supporting people that are looking for information about Kundalini, about the process that they are going through. And um, again, if you can't remember the website, then just go to Google and uh, Google Ascension Kundalini. Well, maybe Ascension Kundalini Blogspot. So it's www.ascension-kundalini-blogspot.com. So that's it, Chrism. I'm really looking forward to the show and to the let's, topic let's, for this week. I, I would like to also, uh, uh, while you're still on, uh, uh-huh. uh, Ms. Santara, it looks like I'm getting that echo from your end again, so I'm going to go ahead and put you in the blue. I would like to apologize to everybody for last week's show. Uh, it was an accident. Uh, uh, you know, we basically what we were doing is we were trying to plan the the you know the shows going on up to the end of the year, and uh, forgot to to uh, to uh, you know increase the time from the basic time, which is 15 minutes, to to over two hours, and so that has been corrected. And I think we're good to go this time. So, you know, I'd like to say once again, you know, apologies for last week. And we will continue the subject that was going to be talked about last week today. And this subject has to do with uh, some of some of the teachings of good and evil. You know, what 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 are what are the concepts of good and evil within a Kundalini context? And so we'll be continuing that. I would as as Amelia also uh, suggested, I would like to welcome uh, the people who are listening in the chat room right now. I see Star Loon, I see Lorne White, and I see a, a couple of uh, 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 names with numbers after them. I would like to welcome the people who are listening to this uh, broadcast in the archives. This would include 
you know, many of the people from Europe where, you know, if you're in uh, France or Norway or Spain or any of those, you know, it's, it's 12 o'clock midnight there. And so I understand that you'd be listening to this in the archives and I want to welcome you to this, to this show as well. I'd also like to welcome those who are listening to this in their sleep. And I'll be offering a special uh, prayer uh, during the program to to uh, to help a person with any levels of blockage that they may be encountering in receiving Kundalini information-based dream teachings. So we'll be covering that in the show as well. I would like to welcome uh, one our one of our ambassadors uh, to the Minnesota area, Rosemary Goliath. And I'm going to bring her on board. And hello, Rosemary. How are you? I am just fine, Kristen. Happy Wednesday to you. And a happy Wednesday back to you, my dear. Do you have any announcements you'd like to to let us know about? Yes. We have our seminar here in Minnesota, September 27th and 28th. And my there's there on Facebook are several places where you can access that information, that events and seminars. Uh, with Chrisom, and my email address is rosemaryg at usinternet.com, and I'd love to talk with you. I was going through emails that I have received in the past today to send them reminders as well of the information, so thank you for the opportunity. Are you, are you like doing aerobics now while, while we're talking with you? No, but I'm walking. And I just am getting off the the, the highway here. You're Safe walking off the highway? That's kind of a weird thing, Rosemary. Are you okay? I am. Are you hitchhiking? No, no, it's a good idea. I'm not that far from home, though. That's why I'm walking. <laughs> good for you. I'm just kidding you. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm gonna. I, I thank you for those announcements, and I'm gonna put our other ambassador on. And uh, Ambassador Eileen, how are you? I'm fine, Prison. Do you have any announcements that you would like to make? No, Rosemary covered it. I'm looking forward to visiting with you and uh, attending the talks that you're going to be giving around the Twin Cities area and the seminar. And I look forward to meeting the participants. Well, and. You know, the, the, the gift is, is, is their meeting with you as well. All right. Uh, good to hear from you, Ambassador Eileen, and putting you in the blue. Thanks. And I have a very special guest, everybody, that I would like to introduce to you. She is the uh, provider of our Radiance Sutras. She, she is a, a health care professional in an undisclosed uh position because, you know, healthcare doesn't exactly recognize Kundalini. She is a wonderful, 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 graced person. She has active Kundalini. She's had active Kundalini for about a year and a half, two years now? Yeah. About a year and a half, so she's she's kind of a rug rat at the moment, but she's getting there. And I'd like to introduce uh, everybody to Josephine Smith. Hello, Josephine. Hello, everybody. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm here at the ashram learning many things. <laughs> what kind of thing? Patience, for one. Tolerance. Patience, tolerance, all the good qualities. Okay, very good, very good, very good. So welcome, Josephine, to the show. And just so uh, people know, uh, and, and I want to say hello to Julie and Fasci and everybody that's coming on. I see you guys are just like waiting until the announcements are done, and then you come in. I get it. I see how it works here. <laughs> so Josephine, is, is, as she said, she's here at the ashram, and we're not doing a lot of traveling. And so it's kind of nice just to be able to do, you know, our meditations and our in our uh, in our uh, um, ablutions towards the Kundalini here at the ashram, and, and she is indeed learning many of the uh, positive and and uh, uh, wisdom based policies that the Kundalini will will kind of institute within a person. So once again, I'd like to welcome uh, uh, Josephine Smith, and we will continue with the program. 
As I mentioned earlier, the program uh, is about the nature of good and evil within a Kundalini context, and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to uh, go through a communication that the Kundalini wrote regarding the uh, the nature of good and evil. And one of the main reasons we are even here is to develop and evolve, you know, uh, amidst the stressing of our humanity through uh, the dark qualities and into the goodness that we strive to be, whether it's through pleasure or pain or anywhere in between those expressions. And as we experience the, the levels of challenge that are, that, that like say evil comprises, well, there are many supports for some of the negative qualities to be uh, expressed in this, uh, in this paradigm. And these supports are often the form of entities, which is a spiritual-based consciousness that does not have a corporeal or, 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 you know, a physical body, does not have a physical body at all, and yet it does have influence with other forms of consciousness, whether uh, in a body or not. And so these entities are basically all over the place. And, you know, many of them, if not most of them, are not kind. They do not have your best interests at heart. Uh, uh, much closer to the fact of their existence with you is the Kundalini will allow them to test your morals and your ethics within the awakening, uh, uh, within the awakening understanding. But before I go too far into this, let's see. Gosh, we're coming up onto our 15-minute, uh, <laughs> hopefully it'll go beyond 15 minutes this time. Um, so so I, I'd like to do a little sound check if uh, Julie or Fasci, Lorne, if anybody, if you could write whether the sound is coming through uh, okay, uh, I would appreciate that, uh, uh, that little sound check. In the meantime, I will continue to... Uh, to broadcast about this, so and I can see I can see everybody typing on the on the yes. Yeah, so thank you. Let's see. Oh, it's good. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good. Well, then I will continue. Hopefully, I will continue. <laughs> Let's see. We'll see what happens. Okay. And so, getting back to the to the good and the evil. Now, these entities are all over the place. The Kundalini will allow these entities to interact with you in order to test your willingness to follow the, the noble qualities. Say the noble qualities would be that of forgiveness, of wisdom, of honesty, of truth, of love, compassion, tolerance, patience, you know, qualities that resonate uh, along those lines are what I'm referring to as the noble qualities. And so these entities... Um, They'll basically come into you and say, oh, oh, geez, you know, you could steal that package of gum. And if you steal that package of gum, that gives you enough time to or, or enough money left to buy a ticket on that bus. And so just go ahead and steal the gum and then you can, you can get on the bus. And, you know, and so you'll be it's kind of like that, that, uh, that, uh, uh, <laughs> what sort of that, that. Understanding if you have a, the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other, right? And the devil's going to tell you to do all the bad things. The, the angel's going to do, tell you to do all the good things. Well, in a, in, a, in a very strong way, that is the equation in the early awakening and mid-level awakening of the kundalini within a person. Except that you get to hear them in real time. You get to understand them in real time. And so the the devil will be, you know, the 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 entity that is that is pushing you towards being uh, unethical and and without morals will will guide you to do these other things. Whereas your your previous guidance that that you've been given as you began to awaken your kundalini, the morals that you've been taught since you were a kid, you know, you don't steal, you don't hurt, you don't hit, you don't, you know, you don't lie to people. These are the these are the levels of testing that the Kundalini will allow those entities to inflict upon you. Okay, so for the most part, 
you know, if they're a negative entity, you know, I will I will suggest that you make no conversation with them. Okay, do not engage them in any conversation. Uh, the good entities or the angels, shall we say, that are on the other shoulder, uh, they won't inflict themselves into your space. They will not push themselves into your awareness against your will. Uh, if they see you going in a very, very, shall we say, difficult direction, say you're, you know, you're, you're falling off uh, of the ethical track or the moral track, well, then they may come into your space and try to correct you. But for the most part, if you decide to participate in some of these more questionable activities or, or ethics, then you will, you will be allowed to, to suffer those consequences. Okay, that just is an indication that there's more refinement to be done in that person. And so they will be allowed to inflict that and to hold that shame uh, within themselves uh, until another moment comes where they can either, you know, move forward through that or continue, uh, you know, in, in another direction. Um, these entities, these these angels and, and devils, you know, they're all over the place and they're watching and they're guiding those who are open to, to the guidance. Uh, they're also with those who through karmic, karmic means must suffer even though they have goodness at their core. Most of us have goodness at our core. Most of us only choose to, to lose our ethical uh, guidelines based upon our, our present day circumstances. If you're starving, if you're starving to death or you're thirsting to death, well, you know, your, your, your ethical morality is going to take a strong hit if somebody says, yeah, hit that guy over there and I'll give you a drink of water or a bite to, uh, to eat. Okay, now, you know, you, you won't always get that kind of a test, but I'll tell you what, they're getting that kind of a test in the Ukraine right now. Ukrainian people are inside that war with, with Russia, and they're, putting, they're being put to the test. They're being laid out upon an anvil of war, and just lately, uh, you know, and I, I'm not there, so I'm only reporting what, what multiple press outlets or, or news source outlets have been relating. Uh, they were, the, they gave, the, the, uh, the Russians gave uh, the Ukrainian soldiers an opportunity to, to safely leave a place where they had been confined and and this was given from the Russian authorities as well in order. But instead, instead of allowing them to leave peacefully, as the Ukrainians were leaving the field of battle, waving a white flag, and they were following the route that the Russians had decided for them to follow, they were mowed down with machine gun fire. This is really where, you know, this is, you can see the levels of ethics that do not exist within a war zone. And for those of you who are listening in Europe, for those of you who are listening in areas that may come, or come under attack through Russian expansionism, you know, just remember the, the words of wisdom that, were, that I related on the, the, uh, the video called Severe Refinement Zones, which took place in uh, Mostar, Bosnia, Herzegovina. Uh, the lady, basically, she lived through one of the worst and the hottest war zones in the Balkan conflict. And, and she basically said, those who stay are stupid. Those who leave are smart. So if you find yourself coming under, uh, you know, coming into a war zone, whether or not you agree with it or disagree, whatever it is, you know, if you're a Kundalini person, get out. You can always come back if you must, but get out. Save your body. Save your mind. Save, save yourself so that you can live another day and help to correct, say, an unjust situation at another time. You don't need to pick up that rifle. Unless you do. Unless your Kundalini tells you, yeah, yeah, you better pick up that rifle. Kundalini is not a victim. But neither is it stupidly putting its head in the, in the tiger's mouth or because it is the tiger, it'd be kind of like, never mind. So, so yeah, uh, when you're in these, these hot zones of ethical corruption, you're really put to the test. And, you know, I hope, well, I know all of you will, will be put into that kind of a hot zone 
in one way or another, uh, you know, as, as, as we continue within this new millennium. So just be very, very, very cogent and aware of where your ethics are, where your moralities are. Remember that you can always just walk away. You can always, yeah, you may have to leave your house. You may have to leave your things. You may have to leave your car, but that's not worth uh, one pint of blood from your body being spilled on the ground because somebody else wants your land. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, you know, within these war zones, the demons and the angels are both there, but which one is listened to more? And, you know, the, the, the demonic, you know, has a very, very strong voice when, uh, when we're dealing in these areas. And, you know, these, these entities, they're placed throughout the, the, the many world societies and, they contribute to our refinement through stress. We must be stressed, just like the plants. When you want to get a certain chemical from a plant, like say superoxide desmutase, which is a which is a great free radical scavenger that you can buy at a health food store in the states until they, you know, until this stupid codex thing comes, tries to infiltrate the states again. Uh, so right now, you can go out and you can buy superoxide desmutase, which in some instances, is gleaned from stressing wheat plants by depriving them of light and, and making them grow longer and, 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 and faster through deprivation. Uh, they, they develop more of a substance that we like to use, is superoxide desmutase, which you know, scavenges free radicals from, from, our, um, from our cells and, and you know, allows our cells to live longer and, and happier lives. So just as, as those plants are given that stress to, to make that kind of a, of a gift to us, so are we given stress to make that kind of a gift to the divine within us, to the kundalini within us. This is that level of stress given to us. And in some cases, we won't have a choice, just like those wheat plants, those little wheat plants didn't get a choice. Okay, They were, they were basically... Uh, uh, kind of pushed into that whole situation as we are, as we come into a war zone, as we're tempted to fall into uh, immoral activities through the many various uh, invitations towards that that we have in our society. And so this is all over the place. This isn't just in a war zone, but our task, our task is to know and understand and do the goodness works Anyway, even though, you know, there are forces arranged that would try to stop us or to thwart our evolution in, you know, towards the areas of grace and love, with, certainly within a Kundalini context, this is as it is here on this world. And it really, you know, once you understand it, you can glean the teachings in a much clearer way. So when you feel yourself, you go into a store and, you know, the you know, a thought enters you, oh, you know, steal that, whatever it is. You know, you just know, oh, okay, yeah, so I guess I'm paying for everything here. And pretty soon you won't even get those kind of messages anymore because it's known that you already have a very clear uh, uh, commitment towards not being a thief, okay, or not being a rapist or not being a, uh, you know, uh, you know, somebody that is taking – taking advantage of whatever ethical outline that is being offered to you at the time. So our task is to know that and to understand that and to do the goodness anyway, even though there are forces arranged that would try to stop us or, or to get in our way of that. Now, when we know the cause and effect, as I just said, we can change that effect by changing the flow of our own choices, even as, you know, the situation we're in pressures us to do otherwise. We can now, because of our information, because of our knowledge given through the Kundalini, we can now, through the Kundalini, which is giving us the impetus to do, uh, we can recognize the demon or the devil that is that is giving us the, the suggestion to do harm or to change the game and, uh, you know, change the game of our moral uh, upright 
within our own societies, understanding of what morals are, uh, we can keep that. We can ignore the impetus to do harm, and we can keep our, our ethics intact. We can keep our ethics intact, especially as we are guided to do something wrong or something harmful. We can instead turn that into a kindness. And so that every harmful guidance is changed into a kindness in the real world and inside your head. That's very, very, very important to do. That also deals with the, uh, the process of self-correction. You constantly, constantly, constantly self-correct yourself towards high ethical and moral guidelines within the Kundalini constantly. Now, you know, the people around you, they may fall into sin, as, we, as you know, some people say. They may fall into sin. They may, they may decide to make that choice to fall into uh, something that is hurtful and harmful to others. And, and you know, they may try to, to, to devalue your uh, gift to the world through your high moral uh, expression. They may try to devalue that. They may try to, to hurt you or, you know, slam your, your uh, uh, you know, stab you in the back other people and things of that nature, you know, really try to impugn uh, your, your gifts into society and you just need to forgive them. Constantly, right. constantly, constantly forgive them. It is not your task to seek revenge or to, or to uh, pull yourself down to their level, even though that is the, in, the invitation that's being given. So when you know the cause and effect, you can change that by making different choices. And as you make those different choices, uh, you begin to, to short-circuit some of the more challenging anti-ethical uh, communications that entities may be giving you. Okay? It's a struggle. And, and there is injustice all over the place. Uh, you, you can see it, and people are responding. Uh, you know, they're they're responding to the to the invitation to to be unethical. They're responding to to you know hurt other people and to try to gain access to to uh, the power of of having a lot of money or having a lot of uh, property or having a lot of physical attachment, and they're willing to do that. And, and you know. We all know that they're out for We all know, you know, that they're there, and we all have had some sort of a uh, interaction with them throughout our lives. And so we know who we're talking about here. Okay, we just we only need to look at, uh, say, you know, the president of Russia, you know, coming into Ukraine that way, and and the 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 you know the response of uh, the European leadership, the United States leadership, in response to. You know, thousands of people being just slaughtered. You know, what, what's going on with that and all of the different balances that must be maintained in order to, to stop the world from sliding into, you know, a World War III scenario. Uh, we, we know about those, but we also know about those closer to us, those who are, those who play poker every night when they should be listening to, to Kundalini. To, oh, 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 I didn't, did I say that? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just a little reference there. No, those those who are playing poker and are cheating, not anyone that we know of, but, you know, there are people out there that try to do that. And there are people out there that will just, you know, take a gun and go into a convenience store and try to rob people. I mean, this is happening every day in the States, never in Ireland. It never happens in Ireland, but it happens all the time in the United States. <laughs> And you know, within that within that understanding, we know that there are large populations of people that are willing, through because of their situation or because of their desire for comfort, their desire for power, their you know their you know may have maybe a greed based um, desire for advancement, uh, they will respond positively to these negative entities and what they're suggesting, and you know these. These folks cause us to have to strengthen our moral and our ethical values. And so this is part of the nature of good and evil within the kundalini. Kundalini will let you have those tests. 
If you pass the test, well, then you won't have to be tested that way anymore. If you don't pass those tests, then you will continuously be tested that way. And so, you know, you have to understand that there must be negatives in order for positivity to exist and vice versa. And within our refinement stages, we learn about hatred and kindness, love, fear, happiness, sadness. We learn to discern that which is striving to harm ourselves or others, or that which is striving towards kindness, towards kindness no matter what. We evolve our ways through these equations, choosing to engage the negative or choosing to engage the positive as our own inner consciousness and value systems require. So we're making the choice, folks. And in a kundalini context, you're going to keep being given the opportunity to make the right choice. And once that right choice becomes second nature to you, or even, dare I say it, first nature to you, then you'll stop being tested in those areas. It's, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's pointless. Uh, divinity is what has set up this program that we're in. Okay, Divinity, a.k.a. also known as Kundalini. Kundalini knows that we're go- what we're going through and why we're going through it. Therefore, you know, it's reasonable to, to suggest that the Kundalini knows our karma, which is something that we do not know. Okay. Kundalini knows our karma, and, and by knowing our karma, it can see and it can measure whether we're making progress or whether we are, we're falling behind. It can initiate certain tests or protocols into our equation that allow us to learn in a different way or in a better way. But either way, you know, the Kundalini knows what we're going through and why, and, you know, even though we don't. So regardless of whether or not we know why we do a certain thing or why it is best to strive for kindness, The divine within us is watching and waiting and giving us hints and serving us in ways that enlightens our restricted interpretation of life and allows for us to internalize and discern our changing values. Our changing values basically indicate the kundalini, the new levels of valuation that is coming from our kundalini awakening equation. Okay, and uh, I would like to bring Josephine into this conversation. And, uh, Josephine, how have you experienced, say, Kundalini testing within within your life experience in the short time that you've had it? Well, I had a dream that was this was just recent, and I don't have visual dreams, but I'm starting to have a few. And this was a real tall guy, uh, normally dressed and walking down the sidewalk. He had his arms open, and he then he looked at me, and he said, I'm mad at you. And all I did was just turn around, and I left. So that's not something I've ever had before. It was kind of scary in a way, and I just walked away from it, and that was good. I agree. I agree. You know, that's a good example of, a, of an entity coming into a dream teaching, and, and you know, on the one hand, opening his arms, and then as, as you begin to respond to that embrace, it says to you, I'm really mad at you. That changes the equation. And, and I, I feel personally uh, what you did, uh, Josephine, was the exact thing that you should do. Don't say a word. You just turn around and walk the other way. Walk the other way. Uh, that was a lie based in an embrace. Okay, uh, uh, the embrace is something that is indicative of love and acceptance and happiness and wanting to to exchange love with a person where in fact this was more of an invitation towards uh, accepting a lie you know Kundalini is never really angry at you it understands your refinement process it understands what you're going through it doesn't really have uh, the kind of uh, of a uh, emotional expression that that we come to recognize within our emotional body, it is more it is it is in a more absolute nature. Uh, did Josephine do this that that would accelerate her refinement? 
and her evolution, or did she do something else that would, would turn it in a different direction? Well, she made a choice that would accelerate her refinement and her evolution. And so, yeah, she didn't have to repeat that test, and she hasn't yet, as far as, you know, she's told me. And so this is really good. This is really good. And, and uh, as, as the divine who has set up this program uh, is watching and helping us uh, uh, broaden our horizon, we also need to under time that it, understand that it takes time and effort and repetition to really begin to understand what these dynamics are about. And, and these dynamics, literally, because the karma is different for each person, the dynamics of their kundalini awakening equation are also different. You know, and, and so this takes time. And there, there are some signposts that are similar, though. This is why we can get together and we can talk about this, because there are many, many, many similarities within a person's kundalini equation that will, that will uh, uh, harmonize with what other people have felt. And so, you know, we come to life with different forms of karma. And so, therefore, this changes the dynamic of our karma. And, you know, this also changes the dynamic of the different gifts of grace that within these differences were given. And, you know, there are either blessings or there are challenges. And, uh, you know, the, the blessings we accept and the challenges we accept, too. And we strive to overcome those challenges. So it's. It's no surprise uh, that, that there are people who have reached levels of serenity and enlightenment and are not worried about such things as the mundane populations are worried about because they've already been through the tests. They've already been through it. Uh, and even if they were shoved back into the test, they would pass them with flying colors because they've already been through it. They already know the answer. They know what to do. And in this process right here, what we're discussing is we're giving you an understanding. You're being given an understanding. From the kundalini through me, you are being given an understanding of what you need to do in order to, to give yourself that evolutionary boost, to give yourself the knowledge and the information that allows you to make the appropriate choices when under stress. Okay. Always flow with your ethical values when you are being stressed. Take a moment, take a breath, take a step back from the situation. Understand what is, being hap what is happening to you. If you have kundalini awakened already, well, then you know your kundalini knows what's going on. You know it. And you make the appropriate choice within the, the practice of the safeties, which I'll again, you know, deals with the noble qualities, forgiveness, tolerance, patience, love, compassion, truth, honesty. All of these things, you know, you need to begin to factor in. And as you do that, as you make your claim and stand your ground with love, as, say, a war erupts outside of you or inside of you, or somebody's challenging, somebody, you know, steals your car or, or you know, makes a real dent in your in your level of happiness in whatever way that you don't hold on to the anger or the grief that you move through it and you understand that the kundalini is testing you and that where that door closes a window somewhere else is opening up and you just need to find that window and partake of the gift that flows through that window okay serenity is wait, waiting and it's calling you into balance and I'm going to suggest that you respond to that call. And your kundalini will light the way, even through the brutality of negative forces. And it will guide you, consistently guide you into your enlightenment. Just as uh, Josephine described, you know, in her dream, you know, you have a really, really tall, tall guy, you know, which usually indicates an entity that's trying to be more than it is. You know, basically a facade. Uh, and, and, you know, opening its arms like it's going to embrace you, which is the lie, and then telling you the truth as you get closer, I'm really mad at you, boom! You make the decision and you walk away. You don't, you know, you don't cuss at them. You don't give them a dirty look. You just turn around and go the other direction. So I'm going to suggest that you just turn around 
and you go the other direction, when you are also being confronted with the opportunity to participate in a negative or hurtful interaction with, with entities, whether they're in the body or not. Now, I'm going to give out the uh, phone number for you. It's uh, 347-934-0026. That's the number where you can call in and you can ask a question or you can relate an experience that you've had. You know, lift a finger and, and, and call in and let people know that, that you, you have indeed uh, you know, experience these types of, of challenges. And I'm going to bring Her Holiness on here. Uh, hello, Amelia, wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> there you I'm are. awake, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, you, uh, can you relate to a little bit of what we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, um, okay, I can. Um, I mean, you're talking about the cause and effect. You're talking there. I mean, once I began to understand that, it made a huge difference to me. Um, You're speaking there, you know, about kindness, about, you know, choosing kindness or choosing the ethical. Sometimes it's not as simple. Well, it hasn't been for me maybe as simple uh, or as black and white as that in terms of, you know, do no harm or do harm. That choice, I mean... I suppose what I'm saying is sometimes entities can come as thoughts or, you know, trying to undermine things like the surrender that you're giving to Kundalini. It try, they can try to, you know, boost ego's control. I mean, that has happened for me where I, I struggle. Through the, through the use of fear, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But once you, what you're saying there, and this is what occurs to me, once I began to understand um, that this was, you know, really an opportunity for refinement to that stress that was being provided, really by the Kundalini prison, because the Kundalini allows this, doesn't it? Am I right? Yes, yes, it allows yeah. it. You have to be... You have to be given the opportunity to make the right choice, and so the yes. wrong choice must also be offered. <laughs> yes. yes, I mean that is quite amazing because once I began to realize that that this is what was unfolding and being provided for me, and um, well, then that made it an absolutely huge difference to me. I mean, even things like you know sometimes entities will bring up past emotions, you know, Th- things like that, um, get into your head, we'll try and, once you begin to understand what you're teaching us today, um, which I have heard you speak about before and which you have taught to me, it makes all the difference in the world, um, because then you can choose, you, you have a choice. Yeah, now see, now, now Starloon uh, writes a good question on the, uh, on the, uh, on the chat group, she, uh, they, they, I don't know if it's she. <laughs> May I ask a question here? Do I need to believe in actual entities? Uh, with Kundalini, about 65% of the people will actually be able to discern uh, consciousness that is typically hidden behind the veil of, uh, of, of forgetfulness and, and of blindness that most of the world operates within. Okay, and so... Whether or not you believe in the entities, now, if you're, if you're seeing entities or the entities come to you, uh, then, you know, if you are inside of a Kundalini awakening scenario, then uh, well, I don't know who MJ is. So I, I understand Starloon is MJ, but MJ doesn't mean anything to me. It's, it's really nice initials, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> so... Um, um, <laughs> I don't know, it was MJ, blessings to you, and thank you for writing that excellent uh, uh, question. Uh, so, yeah, if, you, know, you know, until you begin to experience entities, then it's going to be a real stretch uh, uh, for people to... to understand that it's a real, it's a real thing. Uh, entities don't really need you to believe in them or not. They know the effect that they can have on how you think. They know the effect on 
uh, pushing just a little fear into this person makes them make this decision, which has a domino effect upon how they live their life. And, uh, uh, you know, how you live your life is basically where you sculpt your, your, your level of enjoyment from your life, your level of blessings that you're able to share with others in your life. And so, you know, a little bit of uh, negative uh, advice or a little bit of a corruption into your process may go a very, very, very long way. Uh, but until you actually interact with an entity or you see an entity, uh, it'll be difficult, uh, MJ, for you to to be able to conceptualize it as a definite reality. And I know, I know there's a lot of uh, advice in the New Age world. Oh, we're all one, right? So we're all, we're one with the entities. We're one with this. We're one with that. We're one, 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 except we're not just one, but we're also dual. We're not a walking, talking singularity completely. Because we're also dual. This is the reason why we're here, is to experience a, a duality-based reality, or we wouldn't be here. Okay? Now, granted, everything is of God, but God has individuated. God has individuated itself so that it can learn about itself and the various different options that uh, a challenging uh, uh, environment, such as the physical environment, will give to a soul and its developmental forces. And so this is a really, this is a really uh, strong experience that the soul will give itself to be a human cut off from all the, the, the thousands of natural senses it has and all the way down to only five, five senses. Oh, joy, how do I get around doing this? What do I do? You know, and there, then the whole human equation begins to unroll for it. Um, so... Whether or not a person believes in entities, the entities are there. They're there, and, and you know, they are there, and they're willing to, to corrupt or to, to give grace. You know, the angels are there, too. So we need to understand that it's not all bad things that are out there, but typically the bad things were, are far more aggressive in their, in their, uh, in their interaction with, with people. One moment, please. I have to sneeze, and it's just it's going to hold off. So you'll hear me sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, you will be given the opportunity to, to refine yourself whether or not uh, you have an entity interaction. When you do have an entity interaction, well, that does change the game for you because all of a sudden you realize that, that – this is a much bigger aquarium than you've ever been led to believe. And as you understand the, the, ama- the immensity of what it is that you are involved with, you will begin to understand that consciousness uh, goes far beyond what the human mind and the human levels of accepted creation uh, is being you know, given through science. Science is very restricted because... You know, it can only go with what it can prove. And it, at this point, it doesn't have the mechanical means to prove that an entity exists. And so, therefore, entities don't exist for those people who are depending on science to, to form the parameters of their existence. Okay. Kundalini people typically do not use science as the ultimate way and the only way of defining their existence or defining the reality of their existence. And when you have an entity pop in, well, hello, you see a head come through a wall or somebody just materializes in front of you. Well, then you begin to understand that, ah, this universe is much, or this multiverse is much more uh, populated than I would have thought otherwise. And this begins to expand your, 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 your uh, interaction, uh, you know, with this world. And uh, Josephine, uh, what kind of experience have you had with entities up to this point, if at all? Well, mine have been in dreams. Um, one of my biggest dreams was with a huge spider. And it was very black, and it had a red tongue. And I had blood on me, and the only thing I could see was 
it. And just lay there and it licked blood off of me. I don't know where it was. It was on my head. Yeah, what? it supposedly fell off the bed, uh, which, yeah, I don't know how that happened. But then that was the end of it. And then it walked, it walked away. But it was very, very large. And, and how did you respond to that? What was your, what, what was the teaching for you uh, as you had that experience? Well, since I'm kind of new at this, um, I just, I was looking at the spider from a scientific point of view, like, how big are your legs since your head seems to be as big as, bigger than my head? So this was a spider that, that you saw, a giant spider? Yes, very black, very black and big legs, and I was underneath it. And so you could see it, the, I mean, the, the hair on its legs, I mean, you could see everything? Everything, and its eyes were glossy black, very close with this spider, but didn't hurt me at all, and I just looked and examined to see how big this spider was. And it would have been how big in, in real life? Take my body, put it in a ball, and that was the head, not even counting the body of the spider. So as big as a as a as a couch, a normal sized couch, or it would fit on an eight by ten rug. Oh wow, eight by ten. That's a pretty big spider. You know, of course, the spider is a is a kundalini creature, and so you know, basically, the kundalini was showing Josephine. Uh, its immensity, its size, its its level of of import in her life, and she was forced to overcome her fear. So this was, in a way, a very very good teaching uh, for for Josephine to have, uh, you know, and it, it licked some blood off of uh, off of her body, and basically. You know, that's basically showing that your blood is my blood, my blood is your blood. It is a is an exchange of energy, and uh, what a beautiful thing. And, 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 you know, she's been seeing spiders all over the place uh, here at the ashram. And don't get the idea that, you know, this whole place is filled with cobwebs and everything like that. It's not. It's actually, you know, uh, Fr- Francine went around the house, you know, getting rid of all the cobwebs before Josephine even arrived. So we're not... She didn't have that many to get rid of either. I'm looking around the room right now, and it's not so cobwebby. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you, you know, we're, we're having a bit of a side conversation here uh, on the uh, on the whole idea of entities. Do entities? Do I have to? To basically, uh, a person is asking if if I haven't seen entities, do I have to believe they exist? <laughs> No, no, you don't have to believe they exist. You can find other means of of appropriating certain levels of teachings from the Kundalini. Uh, but I would also offer you the equation that as above, so it is below. And below, we have many, many, many different creatures of grace here. Uh, every level of, of bacterium and virus all the way up to the, the multi-celled organisms like a you know, a, an insect or an amphibian or a mammal or a fish or a bird or, you know, on up on up the, uh, the ladder, there are plenty of different kinds of creation on this world. And as above, so below. And so below, as above. Okay, so... So I would like to steer people in their understandings that just because you don't see something yet doesn't mean that it doesn't exist and that you may indeed, within a Kundalini context, begin to perceive these things. And even if they go against science and even if the, the MDs may be saying, oh, that you can't see that, that means you're schizophrenic or you're bipolar in here. Let me give you this chemical. You know, just because it doesn't adhere to given scientific modalities of, of understanding doesn't mean that it's not real. It just means that science can't measure it yet. Science doesn't see it yet, and they've got a really easy thing 
that gets them off the hook and just say, oh, you're just schizophrenic. Here, have a drug. Okay. So there you go. I was just like, sorry, Chris, um, I, I didn't see. I didn't. I, I got to back you up a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> something about giant candy bars. Uh, well, that see, that would be an entity. Giant candy bars smothering you. Oh yeah, that would be an entity, definitely. So just so everybody else can, you know, Starloon is uh, talking about. Uh, uh, when I was a kid, I used to dream of giant candy bars out to smother me, but I don't call that entity. Well, yeah, I mean, I understand you can call it giant candy bars that are out smothering me, but they definitely have an intention. You know, and, the, and typical candy bars don't have that kind of intention. Uh, so you might want to to take that leap that within your within your dream life, you know, you're being communicated with, you know, through symbols that represent what other people may be able to see as entities. And, uh, you know, I'm not buying in the whole Nets thing anyway. Uh, just like Josephine, you know, Josephine comes right out. She says, well, most of my entity contact is in my dream life. Well, hello. Hello, Starlin. Giant candy bars out to smother you. You know, basically, you know, you're being told not to eat so many candy bars. Not to eat so much sugar because that can smother your your pancreas. Okay? With a little knowledge, you can go a long, long ways. You know, and, and then, of course, you know, we have the many, many different dream teachings that come to us, certainly within a kundalini context. You know, that, but the positive ones come there, too. You know, you get the bliss. The bliss is a real sensation. The bliss is a real deal, uh, especially as you pass a fear test. So as Josephine, you know, a giant spider is sitting on her, lapping up some blood off of her chest and turning its thorax around so she could really get the idea of the size, you know, all the way down to the hair on the leg. Joy, you know, so so she's really she's really getting it. But Amelia Amelia and I experienced the giant, giant spider in Tombstone, Arizona. And it was indeed, you know, as large, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as Josephine's spider, and yet it blocked the doorway for, for, for the demons or the, you know, the negative entities that were wandering the streets of Tombstone, which they still do, by the way. But it kept those from coming in. That's a real positive positive thing now it just so happened that you know we went to tombstone arizona looking for tombstone arizona we're just kind of we didn't realize that the highway really you know kind of isn't representative of tombstone arizona and, you know we finally found our way back into the actual tombstone arizona and, and the only motel open was the most haunted place in the city of tombstone and uh you know, it was one of the only original structures that remained from the 1880s uh, period of Tombstone when all those deaths and all those those uh, major refinement programs were, were initiated for so many people there. Um, and there's a lot of entities uh, in Tombstone, Arizona. And the Shakti Kundalini uh, from Amelia, not so much from me because, you know, I'm not really there to get tested in so many different ways, but... But certainly Amelia was, and she had a lot of really cool phenomena, watching her hand uh, uh, dematerialize and, and, you know, watching all the different sparkles and all the different phenomena that can occur within the Kundalini. But most importantly, seeing the huge spider at the door as, you know, negative entities tried to get in and, and just seeing them not able to do it. How cool is that? So the first thing, you know, you got to get over that whole fear of the giant spider, which is not the easiest thing for any of us that watch the Lord of the Rings. You know, Frodo is like basically, you know, at war with that giant spider. You know, it scares a lot of people the same way the serpents in the Kundalini will scare a lot of people. And so we have to get over our fear of, of the natural environment and we have to reinforce our understanding that Kundalini comes to us through representatives, often through representatives of the natural environment. A tiger, a spider, a serpent, 
you know, a praying mantis, an eagle, a whale, you know, a shark, all these different top of the line or top of the pyramid uh, uh, predators. These are kundalini animals. A bear, a dog with glowing red eyes, you know, that, you know, people see that over and over again. And so the scenario is, is you need to begin to look at nature in a different way. And as you begin to look at nature as a source of knowledge and information from the kundalini, it begins to, to have an effect on how much you fall into fear. Fear is one of the big stumbling blocks, and it's one of the first primary stumbling blocks that, that, uh, that will be used as a way to further your evolution within the kundalini. Okay, Fear is the great modulator. Fear is what allows you to go forward or not. Okay, If you can overcome your fear, then you will overcome a lot of the negative impulses that are being directed your way through the entities or whatever you want to call them. Okay, If it's easier within a New Age context to say, well, yes, it's the, the forces of challenge. <laughs> Sorry, I get that new age voice going on in me here. You know, it becomes very light and very airy and very, uh, you know, wanting to avoid any kind of uh, of a of a challenging situation. You know, floating hearts and teddy bears. So hey, you know, among the floating hearts and the teddy bears, that's fine. If that's the way you want to see it, if that's what makes it comfortable for you, then fine. See it that way. Go, go with it that way, and learn the teachings that you're that you're being given from the floating hearts and the teddy bears. It's fine. It's fine. It works. But the scenario really, you know, when you, if the kundalini decides to open your third eye or open your awareness to a degree that allows you to perceive other levels of non-corporeal consciousness, then you, you know, you'll you'll come in contact with things that children see or things that uh, the, the, the animals will see. If you watch a cat tracking an entity across the room, well, if you're able to see the entities, you're able to see what the cat sees, and both of you can track the same entity across the room. Lasha does that a lot. She's an entity tracker. So, so understand that and, and realize that and know that fear really is that main stumbling block. Once you get over your fear, you're rewarded by a lot of bliss, a lot of love, a lot of compassion. Uh, a, a, a level of love and bliss that just is ecstatic, really, in its in its expression. And this ecstasy isn't the same kind of ecstasy as you have, you know, with the sexual act. This is worse. This is much more powerful, and it's much more. It, it's it's far longer lasting. And I've I've uh, I've seen people going into ecstasy for a matter of weeks. This isn't the, the high, high, high ecstatic that can kill you. This is a, a lower form of ecstasy. There are levels of ecstasy just like there's levels of bliss. And these levels of ecstasy, the lower levels you can survive uh, for, a, for a period of time. Of the higher levels, it's got to be very, very short. Very, very short. Or you're, you're just, you know, you, your, your physical, mental... Uh, situation, say, within the early transformations of the Kundalini are not strong enough to handle high-level ecstasy yet. Uh, it can just, it, it can do a lot of damage. It's so strong. It's really the only reason it's not out there to hurt you. It's just, it's so strong that the divine within you will modulate how much of that you can have based upon the, uh, the current uh, makeup of your uh, energetic anatomy and its relationship to the five bodies of, of expression, but also uh, where you're going with it and where high levels of ecstasy will push your equation as you experience it. Now, if you have any questions about this or any of the other subjects that uh, that we cover here in this uh, conversation, feel free to call 347-934-0026. Uh, and I see... Uh, yeah, a lot of people uh, choose not to to relate to fear, um, choose not to recognize fear, as they 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 like to take the sting out of it 
by choosing not to see it in, in a way that is that is uh, of a negative quality. And, and that's fine. If that works for the person, that's fine. You know, I've got no problem with that. There are many, many pathways up the mountain. And, and if uh, blinding, putting blinders on with regards to the, the effects or the actual existence of fear, that's fine. Put those blinders on and, and you know, but eventually you'll, you'll, you'll be given uh, opportunities to experience a greater uh, view of the many different energies that are involved in giving us the evolution into grace. And one of those things is to get over our fear of the unknown. Uh, our fear of the unknown, our, our fear, uh, you know, is, as, as, a, as, a, as a primal source of, of activation of evolution within us. Okay, as we fear something and we get over that fear, no longer do we call or attract its frequency uh, within us. We're, we're able to move on to, say, a different fear or another fear. We, we're, we're able to, to basically cleanse our inner environment, our inner thought structures, our inner dialogue away from, say, a fear-based paradigm and into a paradigm that is far more balanced with regards to what it is that is actually calling the shots in our life. And for us within the Kundalini, that is the Kundalini. The Kundalini will do that. So call us up if you have any kind of a question or any kind of a, uh, of a, of a scenario that you would like to discuss with regards to your Kundalini awakening experience. And I know that there are other people that are listening on their computers outside of the chat room, and I'd like to say hello to you right now. Uh, for those uh, of our of our friends uh, who are sleeping, I would like to begin as I do as I've done in other programs, and I'll offer this play, this prayer of unblocking, unblocking you, my my dear sweet dreaming friends, from any kind of obstacle that would keep you from uh, discerning uh, levels of information from your kundalini to you. And here we go. Ganum tuam gana patia vamahe, kevin kevinum pamashabastum, jay shtera jam, ramina, ramina maspata anaha, nasim banu tvc de sadanam. that your kundalini is giving to you. Open yourself to the love, to the grace, to the beauty that is within you, that is expressing within you, and receive the teachings of the kundalini with all the grace that you currently have. Blessings to you all. And as we continue our conversation, um, you know, I see that uh, you know uh, M- MJ Dash Starloon. She says, I, they say, I fear the joy, ecstasy, bliss because I've been stopped. Well, just because you've been stopped from receiving joy, ecstasy, and bliss doesn't mean that you need to fear it. And besides, I thought you didn't really recognize, oh, you just don't fear the entities, but you can fear the, the joy, ecstasy, bliss. Um, hmm. Well, okay. Uh, kind of like fearing a handshake, uh, but uh, maybe... Maybe you would uh, you would prosper by just changing your perspective about what joy, ecstasy, and bliss has has to stop, and 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 look at what it is that has stopped you. You know, look at what it is that has stopped you from having that joy or ecstasy or bliss. You know, what did you say? It's, it's fear. So fear has stopped you from doing that, and so there's a quality of fear that you could do. Uh, some work to remove from your equation so that you may indeed be be able to to uh, experience and appreciate the different levels of joy, ecstasy, and bliss that the Kundalini offers in 
copious amounts, copious amounts. Oh, my gosh. People stopped you. Well, there you go. People stopped you. And I know that I know another person who lives here in Santa Rosa, and she had a Kundalini awakening. And she was she was in in ecstasy for about two weeks. And her friends got together. Her friends got together and decided, oh, oh we'll just call her uh, uh, Julie. No, no, sorry, Julie. We'll just call her Vera. And the friends of Vera got together and said to amongst themselves, wow, Vera's really, God, you know, she's, she's too happy. She, she just, she's, no, this is just not right. She's too happy. She's enjoying herself far more than, she, it's just not natural. I think we need to do an intervention. And so they intervened on her and threw her into a psych ward where she remained for a few weeks until they drugged the, the, the bliss and the ecstasy out of her. And so, yeah, I can see. I can see how people would get in the way. But, but it's good to, to realize that now you don't need to tell anybody that you're having the ecstasy. And I advise you not to. Once again, science does not accept what it is we all experience here within the Kundalini Awakening world. You know, the, until they get a machine that can, oh, okay, we've got Shakti positive 1%. We've got Shiva positive 1%. Well, we have a balanced equation in this uh, Kundalini equation, and therefore we don't need to give them drugs. Except, of course, the pharmaceutical giants want us to be addict, addicted to their drugs, and so they'll stick to the line that Kundalini doesn't exist just so they can administer drugs for the spiritual emergency, as they like to call it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't tell anybody that you're having this. Don't tell it. Don't tell your family. Don't tell your friends. Just have it. You can tell your cat or your dog or your pet spider, as Josephine's pet spider. Uh, you, you, can, you can tell all those folks because they'll, they'll keep your secret. They'll honor They'll honor and they'll let you they'll let you to continue to have it without being thrown into a psych ward. Okay. The thing is, is this bliss can come so strong, and you just want to share it with everybody. You just it lights you on fire, and it just makes you want to share and share and share and share. Oh my God, you have so much bliss. It's just like, how on earth can you keep this into yourself and not want to spread it to everywhere? And that's a big challenge. One of the reasons I even started teaching was because I wanted people to, to, to partake of the bliss and to partake of the, the wonderful, beautiful experiences I was having uh, then versus what I had getting to that point, which was, you know, the, all the difficulties in the world you can imagine. Uh, so I understand, but you just have to pull back. You have to... To, to, to thank the, the divinity within you for the grace that is coming and just let it lighten up your entire being. And then without saying anything, nobody can say, oh, well, Christmas is just way too happy. That's just unnatural. You just, they'll just feel happy when they're ever standing next to you or around you, as will everything else in the environment. Feel that level of radiance and grace falling upon them. Okay? Um, let's see... Uh, Oh, yes. I'm going to read Amelia's teaching here. Sometimes we are given joy. This is from Amelia Santara. Sometimes we are given joy and bliss, so we know of it. Once that is experienced, it can never, ever be forgotten. Its imprint is upon you. You can let go of fear again, LOL, and, and close that big mouth, LOL. Uh, yeah, yeah, you don't have to tell anybody. And once the bliss does come to you, you can realize that it is you know, it is there for very, very positive and, and beautiful purposes. And uh, <laughs> that Starlin says, that's why I landed here for instruction. Well, your kundalini basically is, is giving you all the instruction that you need. And, and yeah, yeah, it, it, is, it has brought you here. And uh, you, your questions and, and, and the things that you're writing here, Starloon, are helping many other people now and in the future. So thank you for asking these great questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I would like to uh, to bring this over to Josephine Bannon to, to ask her experience with bliss or with uh, ecstasy. Um, 
Um, every day is a new day, as they say, but going to work and seeing the work I do, I have happiness there. And, and uh, without going into it, uh, what kind of work do you do? Do you deal with people? I mean, what do you what do you do? I deal with babies. Oh. Mainly. Oh, okay. So, so you work with a lot of children, and and yeah, children. You know, children are a wonderful vector of unadulterated joy and ecstasy. I mean, they see you through eyes that are so honest and so truthful and so clear and so pure that the joy and the happiness that they give out through that purity can be very strong. Have you experienced that? Yes. Well, I think that is a wonderful, wonderful way to experience joy and, and, uh, and to some degree, ecstasy. Children, babies, you know, infants, you know, before they've been uh, corrupted with our with our uh, assumptions of, of what uh, morality and ethics are, uh, they just come at it pure, pure, pure. But so do their animal natures come out pure as well, and it's the animal natures within them that, that the kundalini will want to temper. And, uh, and so once again, I'm going to give you the phone number if you'd like to participate in this conversation. The number is 347 347- Nine three four zero zero two six. If you'd like to come in and and talk with me about any of these subjects, so good and evil and the kundalini. The kundalini uses the under the ideas of good and evil in order to manifest evolution within us. If we choose evil, you know we're going to be dealing with the karmic responsibility that comes with choosing evil. If we choose goodness. That's the way to go. If you look at it, if you look at this world and the way this world is set up, uh, it's all about power distribution. Uh, The plants take uh, energy, prana, sunlight from the soil and from the solar activities. They take minerals, they take water, they take sustenance from the the environment that is given uh, through the elementals the elemental environment, earth, air, water, fire, uh, those types of scenarios. And as the plants grow, uh, other animals come and they grow within the plants. They eat the plants. They partake of that. And then they, in turn, are are feasted upon by another set of animals and so on and so on and so forth. And so are we given from that perspective to understand that we, when we, when we awaken the Kundalini, so are we also being consumed by divinity. We are being consumed by that which is nurturing us, by that which is holding us, by that which is helping us into a new level of understanding. And the expressions of love and grace and divinity that come from us during that evolutionary period form the sustenance, form the sustenance for those areas of divine expression that we have yet to even be aware of. There is intelligence in the atmosphere of this world that will consume levels of love, will consume levels of, of, uh, of, of you know, any of the different many levels of love that are, that are given in the society and, and uh, will generate reasons for those, for those foods to be given into the, uh, the higher elemental vibrations of the atmosphere of this world. Uh, there's something, uh, a book you can read called Journeys Out of the Body called by, uh, by uh, uh, Robert Monroe. And uh, just look up Loosh, L-O-O-S-H. And uh, it's an interesting uh, parable with regards to uh, energetic distribution between the dimensions and with the idea of love. You might want to check that out. If anybody has a question, uh, call 347-934-0026, and I'm going to go to Her Holiness here. Amelia, you're not, you're still awake, right? You're not sleeping? (laughs) Still awake. (sighs) Yes, cousin. I'm here. Can you? 
how have you manifested your teachings that the Kundalini has given you with regards to energetic distribution? I have no idea. <laughs> That's one of them. I'm not even going to attempt to answer that one. <laughs> I've, it's since you've been talking about bliss and you spoke with um, with Josephine and, and since MJ brought up about bliss and, and, and I was thinking, you know, about bliss and, and what that has been for me. And, of course, you know, I'm thinking about it being a whole, you know, the whole body and how it feels and how it's contained in the body and yet how the body is actually contained within the bliss, you know, how it's beyond the body. And I was thinking about, you know, walking in the physical world when you're experiencing it and how everything triggers. And, and so I'm a little bit not present, Chris. <laughs> because once I, you know, once I began thinking of that, you know, so you yes. begin, I'm beginning to feel elements of it within myself now, you know? Yeah. Well, here's, so here's I can... <laughs> a great way of uh, testing yourself <sighs> with um, and those types of things are uh, <laughs> do something that is immoral. Do something that is unethical and feel what happens to your heart. Feel, feel that level of communication that your kundalini makes to you as you do something that you know is against its agenda with you. And you'll know the opposite of bliss. Mm -hmm. You'll know the opposite of, of following your divine evolution. You'll know how the kundalini feels about that. And uh, oh. I suggest that any of you that are going to be doing this, that you do it in a very gentle way because you don't want that level of pain all at once if you're doing a real big thing. Okay. Oh, Chris, and uh, even in terms of honesty, smaller things like um, white lies, um, you're going to say something that isn't truth, even by omission sometimes, that can be very painful because Kundalini doesn't, doesn't want that and doesn't approve of that, and that can be very painful. A lie exactly. can be very painful. Exactly, exactly. Lying. Yeah. Lying is, you know, lying is a, is a, you know, is is devaluing truth. And the Kundalini is all about truth. It is all about the truth of who you actually are, what you are, why you are. And, you know, when you devalue or, or in, in some way invalidate truth, the Kundalini will respond in a very powerful way. And for some people, it can drop them into a very, very deep depression. A heartbreak is, is what I can, can consider it to be like. That you feel a, a, a piece of your heart just starts to really vibrate with pain, with, with hurt, with hurt feelings, hurt love, uh, jilted love. I mean, it's just really, really, really a strong vibration. At least that's how it would affect me, I'm sure. With with other people, it'll affect them in different ways. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to test what it's like to not have the bliss, well then go that way, and you'll you'll find out. You'll be able to test it. Uh, you know, like and, and 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 as Amelia suggests, you know, even the little white lies. You know, they're the ones lying through omission or or lying uh, just lying in general. Sometimes, you know, you have to lie with the kundalini. You can't you can lie through omission by by telling your, your MD as you're there for your annual or so oh, yeah, everything's fine. Oh yeah, everything's nice, you know, and you do you go home and you have, you know, uh, an hour of Kriyas. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can't you can't tell people everything. But the kundalini, you know, that is forgiven it. Oh, it knows the society you live in. It knows the society you live in probably better than you do. And so it realizes that, okay, if she's going to have that MD that doesn't understand Kundalini, then no, that MD cannot know about Kundalini yet. Yet. Okay, well, well, well this person is in that, you know, still in the paradigm of a society that holds doctors as as dear as it holds divinity, well then, 
those doctors who don't know about divinity cannot know about divinity. It would be inappropriate for them to know because they would make decisions that would you know, hurt themselves from a karmic nature. So they're not allowed to know. And so, you know, when you lie through omission to your MD, it's not a big deal with the Kundalini. You won't feel that. You may feel a vestige of that pain in the heart, but nothing like if you actually went out and, and aggressively told a lie just to feel the pain. Okay. And uh, we'll go over here to to uh, Rosemary. Oh, yeah, there she is. Nope. We're going to go to Eileen. Eileen, hello. Hi, I'm here. What have you felt with regards to uh, the heart and the, and the, uh, the different levels of pain or, or, or joy that you can hold? I seem to have mostly the pain <laughs> that's been in the last year. Um, well, what would you be- what? what would be the genesis of that pain, do you think? Uh, loss. Loss of, and um, I want to say detachment, but before it was, <laughs> before I went into detaching, it was loss taken. Kundalini basically started taking everything from me, which threw me into a depression. And I'm slowly working out of it. What what are you learning about yourself as you experience the depression? Um, that I'm I'm I I'm basically a very negative person, has been, and it's difficult to switch that around. Uh I have in the last couple of days I've noticed I'm starting to sing again which I haven't done in years, actually, since Kundalini came. Um, I used to sing all the time, and now it's starting to come back, and I'm talking to myself, and it it just feels really good. <laughs> Try um, telling that to your MD. <laughs> I'm saying that right. No, it's just... Um, no, it's, it's, it has not been easy. I don't have the entities, and I don't have <laughs> some of the severe um, symptoms that many people have. Mine have been mostly just more emotional and physical, too. Um, yeah. But, but I, I just I want to say this because it just happened recently. <laughs> In the last two years, I, I, I had surgery on my knee, and... I've been so concerned about falling, and I did fall a couple of days ago. And what was interesting, I didn't go to my knees as I normally do. I went from standing up to flat on my face and did injure my hand a bit, but it's it's coming out of it so quickly. It's not... Um, I remember when Amelia had hurt... I, she hurt her hand, and... Um, Actually, the Kundalini healed it. I feel that's happening with me, and it, well, that's very, very cool. That's very nice. Yeah, and nothing it, like that. Nothing like that to give you some validation, huh? Oh, oh, definitely. And it's. I mean, it's not that I'm just sitting here not doing anything. I'm, I'm exercising it slowly and asking for healing from Shakti, and but it, it, it's. It wouldn't have happened before, I guess I would have. And for me, this is part of my process. I didn't, it, it, I didn't get up, I really didn't get that upset about it happening. I just, I was more upset with myself for being so clumsy. But, um, you know, things are going to happen and they get worked through. And I, I just feel, I feel really good about it. So. Anyway, I don't know if I answered your question. No, no, no. As, as you should feel good about that. I mean, I think that's great. That's a wonderful answer. And I think that anybody that's listening to you can hear that even though your ego on the one hand says, oh, gosh, like Eeyore in, in uh, Winnie the Pooh, it's like, oh, gosh, nothing yeah. ever happens to me. And yet, you know, on the other hand, the Kundalini speaking up inside you and going, oh, yeah, well, what about healing that face plant the other day? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so there you go. Yeah. There you go. And I hope you think thing, I, One other I thing hope. I just want to mention, Prism, is um, people talk a lot about their phenomena and their events, and not everyone has those. I mean, I I have not. Now, maybe it's coming down the line, but uh, for right now, and in and, and so trying to be, to be okay with talking. that. Your ego's talking again. It's like, I haven't had any phenomena. Oh, but I'm being healed of that fall. No, no, no. I'm talking, ab- no, I'm talking about uh, uh, bells and whistles and things like that. I, m- mine is more, um, you know, healing yes, face- my hand. <laughs> what? Healing a face plant. I, I didn't catch that. I'm sorry. Healing, healing a face plant. It's when you fall on your face. It's called a face plant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I actually didn't hit my face, and it and it didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. So, so that what I'm saying is, it's not all uh, bells and whistles and entities and kriyas. It's not all that. It's you know, it can be a different type of um, event or phenomena. Like in my case, a, a lot of healing. So I just want to... Yeah. No, that's you. excellent. No, no, no. no. I, I will echo that. I mean, and thank you, Eileen. Um, she's absolutely correct. It isn't... Not everybody shares the same phenomenon. Uh, for somebody, like, say, you know, in Eileen's scenario, you know, she needs to do more internal work of a, of a, of a, of a self-disciplined, you know, type of expression, and whereas other people, you know, they have come into the entity stage or the Kriya stage, and the Kriyas happen to you whether you like it or not. The entities will also happen to you whether you like it or not, whether you believe in it or not. You know, they will come to you and they will distribute whatever message the Kundalini wants them to distribute to you. And, you know, you can either expand your horizons or not. I mean, once again, it's up to you. Uh, you know, once again, I, I counsel people not to engage with entities. I don't care if you see them or not, but just don't talk to them. Don't, don't do anything they tell you to do, even if it seems right, because there's always a level of corruption within entities that are there to, you know, they're not necessarily the, uh, the, the greatest evolutionary tool uh, if you follow their instruction. They're not a very good evolutionary tool. If you don't follow their instruction and you follow the Kundalini's instruction, which, you know, that is your best evolutionary tool that you could do, it would be to listen and surrender yourself to the Kundalini. Now, in the 27 minutes that we have left, I would like to to say something about the uh, the seminar in Minnesota. Seminars are very special. It's very rare that, that people in, in a Kundalini awakening environment can come together. It's very, very rare. You know, and, and I know these days, you know, you're looking at some of these oneness things that you get on the Internet. And, you know, it's this couple sitting on some throne in India thinking that they're giving people a oneness blessing and all of this stuff. And it's just so much of shall we say, it's challenging information with regards to its truth. Uh, so, you know, I know that, you know, and you got another guy out there that, you know, he's a good-looking Indian guy, and so that attracts a lot of the libido-oriented people. Uh, and, and, you know, they're calling themselves swamis, and they're calling themselves kundalini awakened and all of this stuff. And so there's a lot of disinformation out on the Internet right now about what it is to have kundalini. Well, those of us who actually have it, and are expressing it and are going through the many different phenomena, signposts, experiences, feelings, dream life, uh, you know, that, that it all coalesces into a kundalini equation. We know that we have, we don't need, you know, some swami to, you know, lay their hands on us or do whatever. Uh, we don't need to, to, to listen uh, to an outside force, even a chrism. You don't need to listen to a chrism to tell you that you have the kundalini. The kundalini basically will let you know in no uncertain terms. Okay. Now, if you, if, you, if you are, if the kundalini hasn't let you know and yet you're still having the phenomenal, well, that means it wants you to reach out into certain areas to get specific information. And it will guide you to these areas of information. And, and many people are guided to to the, uh, the levels of information that are offered on Facebook. And so we have 
a Kundalini Awakening exclamation point Facebook group. So Kundalini Awakening exclamation point on Facebook. We also have Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 on Facebook. These are open groups. Anybody can join. Um, if you send me a PM at chrism.com, Chris, Chris Mitchell, I think is what it is on Facebook. Yeah. You can PM me and, and you can, uh, which means private mail me. And you can let me know that you're, you want to sign up. You heard, um, you heard the radio program. You want to sign up for any of these groups and you can join these groups. On the Yahoo network, you can go to a, a, a group in Yahoo groups called Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Group.com. There's also Kundalini Healing at Yahoo Groups. You'll also see a Tantra group there. And I haven't been teaching Tantra so much because I find the, uh, the levels of maturity within uh, uh, the West are a bit more challenged when it comes to dealing with anything of a sexual nature. Uh, and so, I, you know, I haven't really, I have a lot of Tantra I could teach, but, you know, I, it's not the kind that you see out there, the, you know, the sugar-coated fairy wings, you know, uh, non uh <laughs> non-fluidic <laughs> tantra my tantra is the real tantra it's the real deal it's the, the blending of the physical shakti the physical shiva uh and and you know the the eye lock and all of the different locks and so i have i have i found that it's best for the other kundalini teachings that i pull back from the tantra teachings and so there you have that um on the YouTube network, you can go to chrism.kundalini or just, you know, chrism, the number zero slash through it, and then kundalini, and that will bring you to about 304 videos, I think, or somewhere around there, maybe 300 uh, videos there, and you can participate in watching those videos. You can comment on some of them, you know, all of the stuff. So I'm also on Google Plus at Kundalini Awakening. Uh, exclamation point, I believe. And then, of course, there are various blogs, uh, 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 Kundalini, uh, or Ascension Kundalini at blogspot.blogspot.org. What was that, uh, Amelia? Come on, get in the red. There you are. Okay www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com That blog dot, uh, dot com. Uh, so you can go there, and, and uh, there are a bunch of other blogs that are associated with that blog as well. Uh, a Dark Knight Soul blog, a Chrism uh, uh, Shakti Pod blog. I mean, there are, I have five blogs out there. And uh, so you can get a lot of information from any of these groups in any of these areas, and I want to invite you to do that. And, and you know, take the information that you receive uh, from these broadcasts. And, and, you know, a lot of people are going to disagree with this, and absolutely, they're going to disagree with that because it doesn't jive with either the, the agenda that they're carrying or the experiences that they've had. But you'll find that, there's a certain level of person that has had the Kundalini to such a degree that they cannot deny the, the truthfulness of the information that is given. They cannot deny it. And they won't. But for those, those who are doing, you know, like Kundalini Reiki or Kundalini Yoga or Sahaja Yoga or Sahaja Kundalini, these people, you know, unless you do it their way, it's not real. Unless you do it their way and you, you give yourself to their leader or their teacher or whatever, then it's not real. And I want you to be kind of uh, wary of these types of folks because they are giving out a disinformation. And Kundalini is within you, and it doesn't need their leader to activate it within you. It can activate itself all by itself. Look at the level of information that you're guided to come into. And if it includes the safeties or it includes anything that I'm saying, then you are you have the ability to to self realize already, and I will help you with that. You know, I will give you Shakti Pot. I will give, but I will, even though I give you a Shakti Pot, I I make you earn it by the practice of the safety system. So therefore, you own it. 
You own your activation. You are self-realized. Make sure you understand that. Okay. When you work with me, we are working towards self-realization. You know, I've, I've given many, many, many Shakti pots, helped many, many people into the Kundalini, but they're all doing it vis-a-vis the safety. And what are the safeties? Well, the safeties are on, uh, you know, Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. You come down. You got one, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth option down on the menu there. And you press on the safeties, and you read those safeties. But here's the thing. You know, I'm not going to twist your arm practicing those safeties. You have to twist your own arm. That's the self part. As you self-discipline yourself to practice those safeties daily, and you know, as much as you can, then you are initiating a self-controlled enlightenment equation, and you become self-realized, even though I'm giving you some help. The safeties make the difference. You practice those safeties. You receive kundalini either from my Shakti pot or from the, just from the safeties practiced themselves. You are self-realized, and you own your activation. You and your kundalini. No middleman or woman. You own it. It's for you to have and to hold. And it's for for it to have you and to hold you. Okay? And I'll give you Shakti Pot, uh, you know, as much as you want, but it's the, it's the Kundalini in me that even wrote the safeties. That force wrote the safeties. So it's all about self-realization, which is which is why it, it harmonizes so well with Yogananda's teaching. And their self-realization fellowship. You know, I don't follow a lot of what Yogananda, you know, makes people do. I mean, you know, I'm not having Josephine here become a Kundalini nun, nor am I having Eileen or Amelia, which would be totally silly to have Amelia become a nun. I mean, think about it. The, the Celtic queen of questionable comforts, all of a sudden being changed into a nun? <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah. You can see, you can see you can see how that wouldn't work. But so, the, so the scenario, the scenario is, is, is uh, you are being self-realized. Even as you go through the good and evil aspects of what the Kundalini brings into your equation or what we recognize as being good or evil, which is basically do we, do we practice goodness and loving, loving intentions upon other people or are we out there to to uh, corrupt them and to steal from them and take advantage of them and, you know, kill them just because we want the land like they're doing in Ukraine right now. We want the land. Here, let's just kill everybody on it. That's a balkanization of the Ukraine. And, uh, and we need to be aware of that in the, in the other countries that around the world. You know, it's no different from what China is doing to Tibet right now. It's just that we're so used to China invading Tibet that it's okay. We become inured to it. Well, I haven't become inured to it, neither is my kundalini, and it sees it for exactly what it is, a theft. A theft. Okay, and it's no different with what Russia is doing to Ukraine right now. Now, if you look in the natural world, when you see a bald ego uh, steal a fish from an osprey, which they do, that is also a theft. And the osprey is not big enough to defend itself against the eagle. So what is nature telling us? What is nature telling us? In that example. What is nature telling us when, when, uh, when hyenas will come in on a, on, a, uh, on a jaguar's kill and basically force the jaguar away and take that kill? Well, what, what I'm being told that it tells us is that you must be strong enough to protect your beliefs. You must be strong enough to protect your home. Don't be afraid to protect who you are and those ones, those loved ones around you. And sometimes by protecting them, 
we need to walk away from the problem. We need to walk away from it. Or we'll be forced to walk away. Well, we will we will be killed. Uh, you know, things can change. Things can change. Look at what happened in the Balkan Wars. You know, Serbia was the big monster. Croatia was the actual big monster. And those two monsters got together to fight each other on somebody else's land, which is called Bosnia-Herzegovina. I hope I pronounced that right. Okay. But that got changed, didn't it? Other forces came in and changed the game. So stay alive. And live to change the game, rather than, than uh, you know, you know, force yourself into violence, which may not be uh, uh, so fruitful. Think about it. Think about this. And if you have, if you would like to participate in this conversation, we have 13 minutes left, and the number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And uh, Star Starloon is telling us that Kundalini told me of energy healing long before it was common. Well, there you go. There you go. Kundalini will give you uh, advice and information uh, that is far beyond what the current levels of, of information out there will give. Remember, you know, over 95% of the population is asleep. Is asleep. You know, I go into these areas, like I'll be going into Minnesota, you know, and everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people in Minnesota, hey, they're happy. They're happy with Jesus and the way, you know, the King James Bible, and they're happy with all these things. They don't really want to change. You know, they're very, they're very complacent in their belief system and their structure. They're very complacent and they don't want to change. Why? Why change if you're happy with how things are? Okay. Those people who are so complacent, they won't come to hear me. They won't come to participate in, in the Kundalini because they're happy with where they are. Okay. And so, you know, it'll take a real kick in their complacency before they ever want to change, before they ever want to evolve and and this is fine. I am speaking to those who have already had their complacency challenged, who have, who have from the get-go have known that this isn't quite, uh, you know, where they expect it to be at this time. You know, they want change. They're willing to change. They're good with change. These are the folks that I'm, uh, that I'm talking with even now on this radio show, this blog talk radio broadcast. We're talking to those folks who know that there is more, who are not so complacent with their change or with the speed of their change. And uh, bringing Her Holiness back in on here. Uh, yes, yes, Mother Superior Rosemary, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> so so you're the one that told me that uh, they're happy in Minnesota with... with Recognize that. It's true. I mean, yeah. they'll just say, oh, I just love my relationship with my church. And um, and what's difficult is that the kundalini actually, that experience, all this would enrich all of that and deepen it. Yeah. But um, And I've, I've had two different uh, experiences about religion, and the one was not from this state, but it could very well have been, so I talked about Kundalini one week, and I may, I may have shared this before, but this gal was listening and listening, and she said, oh, no, it sounds like religion to me. So she didn't want any part of it. And then uh, a week later, I'm talking to somebody else, a couple people, and they're from other states, um, and the, so it wasn't religion enough for them. I wasn't using the words that they connected to their deity, and therefore it wasn't of the of God. Right. So it was quite a learning experience for me. So we're really reaching out to those who are being kind of guided by the Kundalini to come. Yes. And so, once again, this really speaks well for the for these seminars because they bring about 
a, a small population of really, really powerful individuals that are helping each other within their own self-realization. And so it's a very beautiful, beautiful thing. And, and I would like to, to announce right here that uh, a very powerful healer will be coming to the seminar. Her name is Josephine Smith. She's right here. And she will be at the seminar. She is flying into the seminar from California. As, as of course, you know, you'll meet Amelia and Eileen. I'm sorry, Rosemary and Eileen. I wish it was Amelia, but, but uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll schedule another time for you to meet Amelia. Okay, and so for those of you that are listening to this broadcast in the future, in the archives, or for those of you that are listening on your computer now and you're kind of outside of the, of the chat room, consider it. Consider it. It is a very positive, positive, amazingly beneficial uh, event to, to partake of. And come to these seminars. Come to them. They are, they are not like anything else that you're understanding about on the web. This is not the same. They are not the same. I have not had one seminar that is exactly the same as the other. Okay, the seminars, I mean, uh, are quite different. And, and I'm going to bring uh, Rose uh, Amelia on here, and she can talk about that a little bit, I think. Uh, Your Highness? Maybe? Yes, indeed. Yes, every seminar is different. We have had seminars in Ireland, and we have had... Um, Three now, I think. We had one last October, one in March, and a few previous to that, and every single one of them have been different. And this is because, you know, everybody who comes is different. And the Kundalini in Chrism, the Kundalini um, gives to the people that are in the seminar what is needed. And so it's quite amazing because I've attended a lot of seminars now and each one of them is unique. Each one of them is very, very special. So if you're in a position to go to Minnesota, please, please consider it. Um, if you're even considering it, it probably means that your Kundalini is, um, you know, communicating to you. And so pause and think about how, how can you do this and find a way to do it? Because as Chris said earlier, you know, the opportunity to meet with other people who have Kundalini awakened is not, it's just not commonplace. I mean, I'm living here in Ireland. I meet nobody. I, I know nobody. Everybody who tunes in, Julie, you know, Fashji, all the other people that are in the chat room and around, very few people, if any, know of other Kundalini people in their everyday life. And so to actually meet with other people in the flesh and the physical for a weekend like that, and to meet with, in the context of um, a group with Chrism there, is, it's a grace-filled experience. So without a doubt, please, please do con do yourself a favor and go if you can. And um, there's a question here from MJ. Do you ever come to Boston? That's a possibility. You know, there will be another seminar again at some stage on the East Coast. So who knows? Um, but for now, it's a short flight there from Boston over to Minnesota, MJ. So perhaps consider it um, because that's what's happening this year in 2014. Boston might not happen for another year or even longer. So this opportunity is there for you and for everybody. And, you know, it's really worth taking. So please, I would encourage all of you to really consider it. I would love to be coming, but I'm not on this occasion. So, yeah. yeah. Sinead, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank Amelia Centara and John O'Connor, the O'Connor clan of County Cork, in Ireland, although John is from the Kingdom of Kerry, the uh, the King and the Queen Queen have coalesced to live in the uh, County Cork area right now, and so I'd like to thank the two of you and your family uh, for supporting this broadcast, making this broadcast uh, available to the many people who who are able to listen to this. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Rosemary and Eileen for their ambassadorial duties and the seminars and setting that up. 
I would like to thank uh, uh, Josephine Smith for her many different areas of support for this program and for what it is we're doing and for visiting me here on this day. What a grace. What a grace it is to have her here with us. I would like to thank you all who have been listening in the chat room. I'd like to thank those of you who are listening in the archives and those of you who are sleeping. Uh, may the Kundalini dreams come clearly and, and, and consistently to you. And so I would like to give uh, Amelia an opportunity to say good night. Good night, everybody. And looking forward to seeing you again all in our hearing being with you all again next week. Good night from Ireland. Good night from Cork. Thank you, Chrism. And thank you for the teaching. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. You're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. Uh, many blessings to you all who are hearing this. And and uh, have a beautiful, beautiful night. Good night, darling. Bye-bye.